Hello foodies and welcome to the Foot in Review Community Cup Match 1 in FIFA 23. Today, my name is John of course and I am joined by my dear friend and co-host today, Nathan Downs. Hey Nate, how are you? Hey John, I'm good, thanks. How are you? All good man, looking forward to this new Patreon Cup. Uh, it's a small one, the first one of the season. Uh, let's see how this goes and the first time we are commentary, so let's looking forward to that. What do you think yeah, of today's scenes? This is going to be good. It's good, exciting. We've got obviously some caps on these teams, so it'll be good to see what the teams are like, how they line up, and obviously how people are adapting to this new game. Definitely. We have today, of course, Daniel R versus William P, or Billy P, as he's like to be called, but I'm sometimes confused by the English changing of names. We have uh, Daniel in blue, and William is in the red kits. Um, something we have to say about Daniel, though. Daniel won the PlayStation Cup last year, Nathan. What do you think about that? Yeah, that was, uh, that was a really good result for Daniel last year. Um, I believe he's been drawn in quite a tough group, John. Um, so I think he might have some stiff competition this time around as well. Yeah, most definitely. So he's playing William, who's a very good player, but also playing Tommy, who won the Xbox Cup last year. So with the crossplay enabled, these guys are both going to head to hat in the first group. Although the first two go through to the next round. And... There is no one in next to that. So from the three players, two players will continue. So this is a very important match to start off with. What's something you are looking forward to seeing in FIFA 23 and these guys playing now? I've already started enjoying this game. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing the different pa uh, passing patterns. Uh, Billy straight away seems to be retaining possession well. Um, you can see his triggers as well. So I'm quite excited to see how different players adapt to, to the lack of skill moves and you know the new passing going sort of that's the the meta. Uh, how about yourself, John? From a, a professional co for coaching point of view, what are you looking for? I'm looking mostly for things that are different from last year or what the players took from training. Both players have been coached by foot coaching before. So I'm looking forward to see how much they bring into the today's match. Uh, the input is from Daniel. So Daniel is the one who recorded these matches. And if you are listening to this and you think, hey, where's all the sound gone? Well, if you're listening to this, just be aware that we can't really put in the music which you guys record or the commentary on YouTube because it will get removed. So we do it without sound, but that means we don't have any pauses, Nathan. That's true. The uh, the unfortunate things for the viewers and the listeners is they'll have our voices for the entire game. So, you know, your, your wonderful Dutch accent is going to be good. My Scottish hybrid, we'll leave that to everyone else to decide. <laughs> it's the first time someone said that Dutch accent is good. Here we got the first shot of the match, though, with Williams shooting a finesse shot in the side corner. Not green timed and a great save. First corner. What do you think of corners so far? I'm loving them. I, th I don't know about you, John, but I really like the way that you can uh, you can affect the ball and have the different uh, flight paths on it. It was something that got me um, excited. I think it was FIFA 2003 when you could first do it. Um, so I love that they've brought that back. But f from your side of things, how, is, how does that work? Do you uh, do you sort of professionals in your higher levels make the most of that, or is it quite a lot to adapt to? Uh, it's a big change from last year, I think, but it's going to be all right. Something I'm looking into what's happening here, though, is that um, William is actually pressing up a little bit higher uh, and Daniel's a little bit sloppy on the passing so so far I think William makes a great first impression although the defending from Daniel's side has been excellent so far here we go though with a skill move from William but Daniel has another great defense you see this um, the ball roll still being moved a lot Nathan I think that's one of the moves that's not very efficient anymore because it's so slow have you noticed that as well? Yeah, I've noticed that. To be honest, I think there's there's a few of the skill moves that were effective seem to, to not be as much, and we're seeing that in this game as well. There's not a lot of, you know, your elasticos and your lacroquettes, although there was one just now, um, but there's not a hell of a lot of them, which is really quite interesting to see. It's more of a, a simulation-type game, isn't it? Which I think is really fascinating to watch, especially in this game. For sure. What I also find fascinating to watch so far is the last pass is so far not going well for either of them, so we don't get many chances. And although this game has been said to be much faster lately, you can definitely see that currently, when you have two good players faced up against each other, the game is actually played really slow, and possession is very important to not get countered at all. Um, who do you think so far has the upper hand, though? 
I think I think Billy's had uh, had the most of the possession. Um, they've both had opportunities. We saw one just before breakdown where, um, if you were to use the new meta, I think uh, Daniel could have used the L2 cross button to to the outside of the foot cross. There was a very good chance there, but it still seems quite even. They're both defending really well, um, and they're both being quite patient on the ball. There's not been a lot of clear cut chances so far, um, but it seems a bit of a chess game at the start of this game. Yeah, it's like proper professional FIFA. What am I seeing in here though? So I'm quite liking that. You'll notice something though. There's little movement from Daniel's team so far, and I think he now you see he pressed the all one to trigger plays, and suddenly the players come alive and there's movement. And he might be the first chance of the match from Daniel's side. Great opening, but what a defensive move from William though. That's great defending though. And here he comes for a counter attack. You see Daniel actually defending it really well with a partial team press. So far, though, it has been very close. And I think both players started it off in, uh, I wanted to say a 4-4-2, four, four, but I'm guessing either Daniel or either William is pushing the players forward or he's playing a three at the back. What do you think? Yeah, it's looking like there's a three at the back just now, um, especially from Billy. Um, it's, it's fascinating. They're matching up so well. Um, they're not really getting much ground further forward, but there's a oh. turnover just now, and there's a very good chance for a counter. Um, although Daniel's very patient and he's not rushing it, which is quite good to see. Uh, very professional in his build-up play just now. For someone whose nickname is actually Rushy, this was a very good play. Although, might this be a little bit of nerves because acting up here for these players? It could be. It looks like they're trying to suss each other out. We're all coming up to half time now. Um, so it looks like they're trying to sort of work each other's strengths and weaknesses out. Maybe in the second half they'll they'll take the reins off a little bit. But in uh, in group style football, the, the first game you never want to lose. You, obviously, everybody wants to win, but you definitely don't want to lose. So this could be a little bit of, uh, of cat and mouse. Who's going to make the first move? And then you might see it open up a little bit more. Definitely. Here's a good defending action, though. Although we get one of the first free kicks we've seen in the tournament and of course the new free kick system like you said it's pretty amazing if you get the hang of it we don't see any goalkeeper movement nor uh, any other movement from the side of billy so this might be interesting ronaldo takes a shot and oh he curves it just past the post that was a great attempt just before half time and as we can see here you see a high dribble success rate from both of them daniel not getting any clear cut chances with 0.1 percent expected goal Playing a flat 4-4-2 uh, against an other flat 4-4-2. And that's why I said I think they're both mirroring each other very well. That leaves us with one gap though, uh, Nathan. I think what uh, Billy does is he triggers or he does a 1-2 pass with his defense, which actually pulls one of his defenders forward, making it a 3 at the back. Is that on purpose, you think? Or is that an unforeseen circumstance, what's happening with his passing game? I'd like to say that's on purpose to try and give a little bit of an advantage into the attack because, as you said, when they're matching up 4-4-2 uh, against 4-4-2, they are literally cancelling each other out. So if you push these players further up, um, you can either drag a defender or an opponent out of position or you can try and kill them on the overload. So I'd like to think it was um, it was on purpose. Obviously, with your expert coaching, John, it might be something that you've worked on. Uh, what do you think? Is this something knowing, knowing them that that's on purpose or is it something that's just a habit of the old game? Uh, before I got to answer that, this is one of the first in-the-box moves, though, from Daniel, but another great defense by Billy and good counter. Daniel's playing a much higher line, though. Coming back to your question, I've seen a lot of players this couple of weeks that accidentally push their fullbacks forward or the centre-backs forward. So it's interesting to see if he does it more often or it was just a one-off. Here he comes again, so let's have a look how he goes. Now, this seems like regular passing going forward, though and not really pushing out his defenders too much. He's playing a higher line. I think that's one way to do it, this FIFA. Um, and here you see again that one of the centre-backs is stepping forward. I think it's Gomez, or at least the right centre-back. So he is very aggressive on the defence. I think it might be intentionally so far. That's, it's interesting to see because a lot of people just have them as conservative, no step up uh, manually or in your presetting. So that's quite interesting to see how it works in a real game, you know, for people wanting to take that going forward as well. Um, still very, very controlled and possession for both teams. This um, we saw Dan before as well, Dan, uh, Billy, sorry, before playing around at the back, just trying to move the other team around and open up a bit of space. So they're both still very cautious with an hour on the on the clock. Yeah, we could really use a goal to open up this game. But we know what might be coming here. We got the Cancelo on the left side up to Modric. 
Modric opening up, and I uh, will not a good defending by. Oh, you might we get a chance. Oh, it's actually go. a goal. That's a great finish that is. Is that Ronaldo CR7 doing what CR7 does best? Yeah, you can definitely see, and this is the a beautiful thing about having replays in this game enabled for us as we are recording this. Uh, Nate, you can see Modic opening up and you can actually look at the defender which is now selected, the cent left centre-back, who steps out, I think. He switches with the right stick, opening up the back line. Ronaldo gets the ball and Daniel has no hesitation here. He turns around and instantly takes the shot and it's 1-0. So that's, yeah, you can, that's one way of doing it. Be very patient, get one chance and give nothing away and make that one count. Let's see if this opens up the game, Nathan. It'll be interesting to see how Billy reacts to that. He's uh, He's got the very OP Erling Haaland in his team, so let's see if he can do anything, which he's holding on to the ball just now, trying to work a bit of space as well. Renato Sanchez, for being an 80-rated card, seems to be everywhere. I've been quite impressed with him, but then he's just lost the ball, so let's see how this turnover happens. This is a brilliant defending action, though, from Daniel, to be quite honest. Uh, I think there's some pressure being relieved with Daniel. He's becoming more confident. The balls are being more directed forward. While Billy is a bit more hesitant and a bit more sloppy on the passing now. You see Daniel applying a little bit more pressure. You can see it here as well. Getting another great tackle. In. And when he gets the ball up in this high, it's his strength. His flow goes over. He gives cross. Great assist. Oh, he misses that chance. Good, goal. good save, though. That was a good save. That should have been a goal. There's something interesting, though. You see all the goalkeepers move on the right side with the right-footed players when they took curve it out. You can actually switch to a left-footed. You can pretty much score when you have a good corner kick taker that can actually curve it in this time, right? They don't even have to be that good at curving, John. I scored one with Malasia, who's a 79-rated left-back. Here we go. You can see Modric eyeing it up just now. He's contemplating it. Let's see what happens. Oh, hey. oh he's overcooked it. <laughs> <laughs> I overcooked that, but very well thought though. There's a big risk in always moving your goalkeeper out this year, which I think is perfectly balanced for this game so far. What do you think? Yeah, definitely. In the last FIFA, we saw the keepers moving and grabbing pretty much every ball, or at least punching it and clearing it. So it's quite nice to have different options to be able to play in, and the keepers have to think twice before their movements. I think Daniel's defending is really saving me there's a lot of opportunities for billy to get into a counter though but daniel's so composed on defend waits until he gets a clear chance in to make a tackle and then tackles it but the last pass on all of them is both a bit sloppy and that causes the pressure now being applied on billy oh what a great move from ronaldo right absolutely i was thinking john um, from your coaching point of view would this be about the time you have to try and go to a bit more of an attack in formation when you've got 15 minutes left in the game and you're chasing it 1-0, would this be something you're trying to go a bit more aggressive and a bit higher up? Or oh, good interception there by Sterling, though. Yeah, definitely good interception. Well, this could be one of your plans to do that, of course. Although, you have to be honest that uh, so far, that Billy hasn't actually created much. He isn't applying much pressure. And he really has to be in possession to create openings here. What could really help is overlapping your fullbacks, for example, to give a little bit more outs, especially since the game is more mirrored so far. I don't think you have to do excessive amounts of changes, but you could definitely use with a, uh, one or two subs, maybe three subs now even, which have a little bit more pace. So if you get the ball off him around here, you can actually break away. And Daniel's playing really smart though. And you might sound like he's really being a little bit too careful, but I think this shows his composure really well. It's not uh, for nothing that he's the PlayStation winner last year, of course. Absolutely. No, his composure was good until Dudek tried to play a long diagonal pass and he put it out into touch. Um, so, which was quite nice to see being a Liverpool player, a former Liverpool player, but biases aside, he's, he's uh, playing very calm. He's controlling the game quite well. And he's trying to see it out, which is, is good to see. Yeah, and not forget Dudek was a final player as well. So, we can't really have too much bias against him. Oh, he's a good yeah. interception, though, from w Billy. But you see, Billy's very fast on the last pass which has now cost him three times loss of possession while actually having the opportunity to counter. And I think here we might get a counter from... Yeah, there he is. Daniel's coming through. Daniel's through and Daniel scores. You saw. Goal. That's yeah, that, that came from uh, Billy trying to push up a little bit. He rushed that. He rushed his pass. Transition happened and it was a different cross to what I was expecting, but it worked out really well for him. Yeah, and that's too old. This case might be close. Let's speak in the 88 minutes. We see now... Billy being a little bit more aggressive, making skill moves in the midfield. Usually that leads to a little bit of lost possession. But now we actually get a chance in. It's a really good chance. Well defended though. Oh, and he's dealt with that really well. Uh, Rushi's done really well there. 
You see him not succumbing to the pressure, although this pass might be a little bit risky, though. That was very risky. Um, as Sir Alex Ferguson would say, squeaky bum time in that. But we've only got 25 seconds to go with a two-goal lead. So although from a professional coaching point of view, John, you wouldn't advise that. From a casual point of view like mine, that's the sort of thing I would do. And I can completely appreciate that. <laughs> Most definitely. I think we have a win here for Daniel versus Billy. 2-0, first match done. Three points for Daniel in the back. And I can't wait to see Tommy versus Daniel, which is the next match in this pool phase.